When I saw rocketry, this was a burning question for me. Was most of the movies about your scientific work and achievement, and then suddenly there's this stark change in that interrogation phase. You are not seeing the same Nambinara and when before the case and after the case. It is fabricated case. The finding of the Supreme Court itself yeah. is it is a false case. Everything shown in that movie actually happened, right? Much more than this has happened. Four years my case is over, and 20 years it took for me to book those people. What do you think it is? Whenever I get uh, no action possible, I get fed up. When I get fed up, I become emotional and I throw things. That that is my life. That was my life. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. Do you believe in aliens? I believe, yes. You believe in aliens? Yes, life. yes, yes, yes. I'm sure about it. There's no basic uh, doubt mm. in my mind about it. So many of us have watched Rocketry, the Nambi effect. It was a blockbuster. It celebrated the life and times of Dr. Nambi Narayanan. We've gotten to know about his story. But for me, in many ways, this episode is a sequel to that movie. It's a deep dive into the mind and heart of the person responsible for giving India the Vikas engine, for contributing so much to ISRO, for contributing so much to the Indian science story. People like Dr. Narayanan need to be celebrated much more, need to be much more exposed on the internet. As it was said in Rocketry, in so many of his interviews, people try asking him controversial questions, try bringing up the one controversial phase of his life. But there's so much more to this man's mind and heart. I'm so proud of my team for even doing this episode because this is a true Indian legend. Everything we do at Beer Biceps and TRS is for India first and foremost. Uh, honor of my life to speak to Dr. Narayanan. Thank you for supporting everyone. Lots of love. I'm a little overwhelmed that I got to do this particular episode, but I hope you watch it till the end and you absorb the mind and the heart of one of the most legendary Indians that our country has produced. So let's start the episode. But all I'll say before we begin is Jai Hind. Nambi Narayanan, sir, such an honor having you on our show. Welcome to TRS, sir. Okay, thank you. How are you, sir? Doing very well. Why do you say that? Because I am really doing very well, that's it. W what contributes to the very well? Very well means that I am happy in the sense uh, physically, mentally and environmentally and various other newses which are coming to me. So in all senses, I am happy. So I am doing well. Okay. What are you looking forward to at this point in life? Actually, I am looking for two things. One is uh, trying to be away from my space-related work and then trying to do something which will give me mental satisfaction. Of course, I am satisfied with my conditions in space, but I, I just thought doing something related, non-related to space. Okay. Uh, one, I thought of doing some school uh, for my for the small children, between three years and six years old, which is uh, for my daughter, that has been accomplished. Uh, last June, last six sixth of September, I inaugurated the school. Now I am looking for a old age home. Okay. Wow. For those who are not left so aside by their children. Yeah. So that, that's what that's what is my next next project next, next project I'm going to. Okay. Yeah. What's a day in your life like now? Well, I I I'm free bird. I have nothing. The only thing is I was trying to fight for uh, justice. I have I hope I have accomplished it in the sense. Actually, if you really look at it, my case was over in four years' time from the day it started. Afterwards, the remaining 20 years, I was only fighting for justice in the sense that those who have done this should be booked. That is done. And that took 20 years. So I am happy. Afterwards, now it is a different case between two prosecuting agency and the culprits. So I'm happy. What date was it completed on, roughly? Actually, it started in the year 1994, October, November. 2000, uh, 1998 itself, April 29th, the case was over. 
that is they said that i am innocent and you, this is a fabricated case then 2018 the case was over in the sense that the supreme court approved the findings of the special committee special uh, committee to frame charges against those people and that approval is over by 19 2018 with that according to me the case is over 24 years 24 years totally yes okay did you learn to live with it in the 23rd year no actually i am happy that i am living even now otherwise people would have kicked the bucket long back with the tension with the kind of uh, so much you know unrest stressful life you know so i'm i'm really happy that's why i said i'm doing very well um there's so much i want to ask you not just about the case i want to ask you about like the whole science side of things as well because i feel you have a lot to contribute to the future of the journey of science of india uh so we're going to come to all that but i have to get one question off my chest because when i saw rocketry this was a burning question for me so please pardon it if you don't wish to answer or if you think it's a slightly rude question but i want to know if you ever looked at this 24 year phase from a slightly philosophical perspective in terms of did you ever question that why it was you or like what was your mentality was there any philosophy involved well a lot of philosophies are involved in fact uh, this is a question which i i have been thinking about it quite some time i as you rightly put it why it is me and uh, what sin i have done to get to into this mess uh, was it a real punishment or whether it is a reward or a corrective or a warning all kinds of philosophical questions pretty long questions and uh, i have my own conclusions on those so they are philosophical in the sense it is i'm thinking of writing a book on that but um, i don't know whether i'll be able to do that because there are unanswered questions even there some some are answered some because see for example something is happening and you don't know why it is happening but then slowly you get to know why it is happening and before that you want to know okay you got an answer for something but there are other subsidiary questions which are arising out of it why this route why not uh, something else so like that the branching questions are many i am trying to get answers hopefully i will get some answers but as i told you philosophy cannot be ruled out without yourself having a strong faith in god i am a strong believer god, god believer and uh, in fact there are questions you used to ask me you are a scientist how do you believe in god in a recent interview i i answered him you think that just because i am a scientist i don't have the fundamental rights of what i am supposed to have <laughs> that kind of a question i have asked so very interesting question and very interesting uh, so many things are to be found out it's a long time it will take long time your relationship with god did it change in those 24 years sure it has sure it has you are not seeing the same in binarayan and when before the case and after the case is a different type of pe- person we are meeting today in the sense shall i say that uh, i don't have this kind of a patience even to answer the questions earlier i used to think fast and the moment i even before completing the thinking i want to act fast that is how i was living for quite some time whenever i get uh, no action possible i i get fed up when i get fed up i become emotional and i throw things and this that 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 is my life that was my life <laughs> no i'm kidding i'm kidding okay <laughs> don't worry i please understand. enjoy the water yeah, yeah, yeah. no i told you i am you are seeing a different person together yeah. <laughs> i won't even unless i trigger you and you throw something at <laughs> no, me no 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 well, i'm come you can't trigger me actually it is difficult i don't want to trigger you so <laughs> no, no 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 i'm telling you seriously why because those earlier it is possible for triggering me very easily you you do something unethical or uh, some kind of a thing you can easily trigger me well of course triggering means what triggering me means you you just make a wrong allegations then you so in the beginning of the episode of the spy case i was triggered 
I didn't know what to do because you know you are you are arrested, you are put behind bars, and you are questioned, unquestionable questions you have to answer. So, you know the, those kind of a life. Then slowly I started understanding. Okay, this is something different, and I started thinking about it, even during the interrogation. I and I won't tell you this unless you are willing to believe it. I got certain directions. while i was thinking about all these matters you mean while you were being interrogated yes interrogated exactly in the interrogation i was told that wait you will get some time don't get antagonized don't get uh, you know emotional you mean you got some intuitions you can call it as instincts you can call it as but i call it as directions okay i got to pause you here sorry sir Uh, uh, just to give context on people who probably have not seen Rocketry, I don't know why that is because a lot of people in our generation have seen the movie now. Uh, but to give you context, who I have sitting in front of me is one of the most accomplished scientists that India has ever seen. Contributed immensely to the journey of science in India. Any achievement of ISRO that you hear about in the news uh, boils down to the work that Nambi Narayan sir has contributed to India. That's been most of his life. and in 1994 he was uh, wrongly accused of something um mistreated by the authorities in india and it took 24 years for that case to get resolved and only now uh there's a sense of justice yeah <laughs> can okay? call it yeah so that's the context of course i've condensed too much information like you need to actually see rocketry to understand this human beings contribution to our country uh but one of the most uncomfortable scenes for me to watch in that movie was most of the movie is about your scientific work and achievement and then suddenly there's this stark change in that interrogation phase and sometimes they say that reality is weirder than fiction and this piece of fiction was based on reality so i can't imagine what that was like from your eyes you're just doing your job for your country and out of the blue god throws this googly at you the way you were treated in those scenes the way those scenes were done where tea was thrown on you and like there was physical you know insult i'm sorry i'm saying all this sir. i'm sorry i'm taking you back there it was difficult for a viewer to watch so i can't imagine what you went through and i have to give the context to the viewers listening to this episode as well have i said anything wrong would you like to correct no anything? no i think what you were saying is perfectly correct and it is really i i am not triggered because of uh, to be very frank with you you become frozen uh, you, you know the 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 years the, the so many years have passed after this incident took place so you became sort of you have taken it not once but so many times you have talked about it and much more than that you have thought about it so nothing no reaction on my side in fact if i if you ask me to watch the movie once again i will watch as if it is somebody else is going through this mill that kind of sensation um everything shown in that movie actually happened right this is a question when uh, when very, very very vip asked me the same question actually he asked me he was frozen and he became very uncomfortable he, i wouldn't say that he was emotional but he was minimum emotional so he asked me is it are you telling me that these all things which happened then i just told him that much more than this has happened really yeah so answer is yes we actually myself and madhavan when we planned this movie i told him one condition that you shouldn't tell any lie you shouldn't justify it by saying it is cinematization or it is uh, exaggerate no you should show only the truth this is one point and also he has to get my written approval for uh, making any changes from what we discussed etc so for example those starcher scenes were very much minimized there was much more that happened much more than that but only thing is you see there is a prestige question nobody would like to say that i was uh, blasted by somebody i was hit by somebody no would you like to say that you will get credit for having got blasted by somebody but this is what has happened in fact i i personally felt at one junction 
all these torture scenes are to be removed because my own children are going to see the movie can so i count I, can i can i count the question you all yeah. don't you think it's important for those scenes to be out there for the public so people understand the reality of parts of our nation sure actually i what i am trying to do so far through my various interviews and two of my books as well as through the movie is trying to inform a common man particularly the youngsters make them to understand this is what we are for example when i said in the beginning that four years my case is over and 20 years it took for me to book those people what do you think it is this is where our system is i am not saying particularly that this is wrong with judiciary but this is where we are you see how can you correct it i think i think these are to be corrected these are necessarily to be corrected because otherwise justice has no meaning what is the meaning of justice yeah so i think we've had a lot of political podcasts lot of political commentators um uh, now there are people on the bjp side there are people anti bjp who we had on the show but i look for commonalities in all the narratives and one commonality i found in everyone's narratives was problems with the judiciary this is a very large problem that actually needs to be addressed by the indian population people need to know about this um uh, and i think rocketry as well as your whole story highlights that in such a such an intense way especially considering everything you've done for india if someone like you could be you know at the end receiving end of whatever the judiciary is uh, went wrong with what about the common man what about like the average indian actually i want to differ from you in sure. the following sense you are saying that i have done and contributed to the country yes so for me the judiciary should be different i am not in agreement with that i am saying that everybody is equal my point is different my point is that judi i will tell you i look at it in a different way in the sense after all finally judiciary has given me a verdict that verdict is very much agreeable to me only thing i am saying is it has taken so much of time but you know you have to justify in two three ways one is the allegation is so grave so they want to make sure that uh, they are giving the right judgment this is one part of it but my point is different my point is the allegation is so grave and the visibility is also so clear for example if you say that such and such a secret has been passed on to pakistan and then uh, through korea and you have to for example they are telling that the cryogenic technology was passed on mind you the cryogenic technology was non existent at that time it is known it is known to all even people who make the allegation number 2 is they said that it is used for making missiles there is not even a single missile even today even today after this 30 years using cryogenic technology and a yeah, missile exists no No, don't you think that these are obviously idiotic and uh, nonsense but still they said that that is what bothers me you see the problem is that the problem is certain things are to be even in 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 media for example the media wrote so many things right you think particularly the vernacular media not the national media national media also to to wrote something the reason is there is no specialist for example somebody says the rocket secrets were stolen through the fisherman boat or fisherman's uh, basket what the hell is it, is it is it that uh, unbelievable so that kind that is because the fellow doesn't know what is rocketry and what are the secrets this is where i am just telling yeah. i call this old media so i think media is also changing and this is a format of new media i'll also tell you one thing for sure my entire generation i'm 93 born Uh, so 90s born and after that looks at you in a very different light than how old media looked at you and we'll keep looking at you in a different light like we know the truth so no, no one thing i want to tell you even today the media is the same you feel so i i'll tell you from the valuing angle 
the media is after sensitizing certain things more than seeking the truth even if they seek the truth they want to sensitize it i don't know why they want to sensitize it sensitize as in sensitize means that dramatize it ah okay that's for their own numbers and their <laughs> own that's how media works yeah like uh, that's why big boss is a concept in our country people like seeing fights and drama so you me- like big boss do i like big boss uh-huh. i only watch my own podcast so <laughs> i don't <know. laughs> i'm kidding i only watch podcast in general but i i don't but the masses do you know and uh, at the end of the day for media to survive you have to make money and to make money you have to talk to the masses so that's the harsh truth of our country but i will tell you that media is changing at least from my eyes there are some some newspapers they are changing they have changed already right from the beginning yeah so i mean my generation we we don't really consume newspapers anymore you know we get our news through the internet which is again a double edged sword it has its positives it has yeah, its that's also full of uh, stories uh, lots 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 of stories but these formats where now you are the person in context you are getting to talk openly for an unlimited duration of time this is where the truth can actually be revealed uh, i'm privileged to be you know a part of this new format but less about me now so more about you <laughs> no no you are doing wonderful i like your uh, i have seen after the after the invitation i just because i thought you are only doing the hindi version of it but then i understood that you are doing the english part of it yeah. so i went through thank you thank you uh, some of them and uh, it's pretty good it is really I, at least i would agree with you that there is a change of format in this thank you so uh i appreciate it this has been a dream podcast for me thank you for being on the show today it's no i'm kidding <laughs> i'm going to ask you a lot of questions yeah yeah um okay how did you feel when you were seeing rocketry for the first time actually i i don't know actually what i did i was associated with the production of it yeah. in the script writing actually we were discussing this for one year myself and madhavan so once you repeatedly discuss certain things and then what to include what not to include and then the film is produced based on an agreed script yeah okay and when the picture is completed when i saw this um, i was not happy huh? i was yeah i i felt that uh, something is missing it is not really <clears throat> and i asked madhavan madhavan also said yeah i also feel then we identified that uh, something is wrong in the editing part of it so we got hold of uh, a, a veteran editor who was a young fellow very young fellow he did the magic and uh, then the entire thing was shown i was not becoming emotional uh, excepting one or two scenes while i was watching the movie one scene was my wife was uh, shouting uh, when when i came into the house that was taken in one shot it was single shoot it was done a simran has done a wonderful thing that i became emotional because there is something which you can't bear with that it is that recollected me the original uh, scenario moment, moment. then the second scene where i became not emotional in the sense not pathetic but i became proud of myself having stated that i will not excuse you at the end of the scene i come as a person and then say that it can't be forgiven you can't forgive that so sharukh khan sharukh khan right and if i do that then it becomes a routine affair and that was uh, something i was feeling proud of saying that and we discussed and debated a lot of things will the audience like it will will they i said whether they like it or not this is the truth now we are going to speak the truth you remember i told him but i will tell you the picture got overwhelming i saw this movie along with the audience in bombay uh, madras bangalore um and trivandrum i saw uniformly if there is an emotional scene in all the five places the emotions were the same or if there is a clapping it was the same so the, the feeling of the general public is the same no matter which language they speak but most important thing which i have found out is every one believed what was shown to them you know the reason because we are speaking the truth the truth is believable 
it is not that we have exaggerated anything we have just shown in fact the actual torture if it is shown somebody may say it is exaggerated <laughs> you're not comfortable speaking about exactly what happened right not comfortable in the sense uh, it was much more than the torturous scenes which are shown most cruel way of uh, doing it but the question is it is not the persons who did the torture it, it is, is their bosses yes they i don't know at that time at that time why they but one thing is that torture was so heavy i came to a position where i am not going to go back on this i am not going to submit to their torture that became a rigid attitude of mine so what example they were not giving me a seat they were not giving me water to drink and they were asking me to stand at that standing position they asked me one fellow asked me how long do you think you will stand i said as long as my physique permits and this i said with a conviction not as a dramatic uh, way i just said as as long as my physique permits me i will stand i did that and after about i don't count the time because no watch no time is there i think approximately 30 hours then i collapsed on the floor while collapsing also i am aware that i am falling down it is not i am falling down on my own your legs are not able to stand your weight and things like that so this is uh, this is what has uh, happened in that uh, during that time so the truth is being shown the people believe it i'll tell you anywhere if we would have exaggerated people would be believing everything is a hoax yeah um okay there's a part of me that wants to say sorry on behalf of the country in the way sharukh khan see what sharukh khan said says um <laughs> and then i've also seen the movie so i won't say sorry on behalf of the country because i know you've not ac- completely accepted the apology yeah shouldn't in my eyes um have you met the guys who were in that room with you you mean Af- in the torturous uh, yeah see i am trying my best to look at them okay you won't believe it excepting one character none of the fellows i could see in my life afterwards for the past 30 years i have been telling them uh, in fact one fellow told me sir we will prove it to you you are the spy and then if you prove it to me back that i am not the spy you chapel me with your chapel i have told in more than one interview i am ready with my chapel <laughs> <laughs> but nobody turns down then another interesting thing was i am t for example one character very interesting they were determined not to disclose who they are so one fellow came and then said hello uh, you you tell me uh, that you know we have to then this was just like that i am telling that fellow's name left and right in many interviews in order to tease him in order to invite him for a uh, discussion but he never comes i am telling him that this please come but i am not able to see any one of them even in the court not even one fellow so these are all people who are living in i hope they are living and there was one fellow who was uh, <clears throat> talking something very big in the sense he will do this he will do that he will beat me all kinds of thing after all over and above the torture and i was told i didn't go there because along with their team i was told that when they went there recently for the after identifying him as one of the accused the fellow comes with a folder of medical reports saying that he has blood pressure he has this he has that he has it falling at the feet of these people saying that excuse me don't uh, ever arrest me etc etc so that is where your first question comes valid i i was telling to myself that one day these fellows will pay for their sins and that is what is happening were these members of the kerala police no actually there were kerala police as well as the ib majority of them who were in the interrogation were the ib people okay and ib people you don't you know by name you 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 know these are the names but you don't know who which name refers who 
whether the mustache fellow is so and so, whether that fellow, no, you don't know. Because you have not seen them before or you have not seen them after. So, I, I mean, I wonder how the intelligence bureau got the wrong information or intelligence about you. Intelligence is basically data that they use to validate the cases that they want to go after. They so, never validated it. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying that this is the intelligence, the intelligence bureau of our country. It is fabricated case. The finding of the Supreme Court itself yeah. is it is a false case. No, I'm trying to highlight the lack of correct work on their end. I'm not highlighting. I'm exactly telling you that if the fellows are originally thinking it is a true case and finally they found out it is a wrong case, then you are right. But I am saying in the beginning itself, they knew that they are fabricating it. Okay. Otherwise, okay. how it has become a fabricated case? False case. And you're still trying to get to the depths of where that fabrication no, I have originated tried my best. from? I have, I have gone to the depth of the case in the sense that uh, you have to find out from them where from they got the instructions. Uh, questions like, well, why are you behaving like this? Why did you behave like this? I know the answer. Everybody will say that uh, so, so and so told me to do this. I've done enough podcasts in my life to know that very often with national issues, there is geopolitics at play. Geopolitics is extremely dependent on the scientific and economic progress of the country. Now, in many ways, you are one of the most key players in the scientific progress of the country in the 90s. Have you ever thought that some geopolitical powers had their eye on you? Sure it is. Actually, when you said that uh, 90s, I just want to recall the recent Gaganyan project, just one month back or some 20 days back, you know, which uh, the Gaganyan, that uh, escape module was carried by a single rocket, which is nothing but a Vigas engine. That is the modern engine which I have developed in other places. It has worked in conjunction with so many. Uh, here it is the sole Soul rocket. So it's not only 90s, even today, it is very yeah. much there. Yeah. I'm, I'm highlighting 90s because that's where yeah. stuff happened. <laughs> no, no, like, I, I understand. But, yeah. you know, very direct question. America was in power that time. Now, imagine they are seeing another fantastic scientist who could have been theirs, but is serving an upcoming economic power in India. Uh, if you want to take out the Indian cricket team, first you take out Virat Kohli. From a geopolitical perspective, if you want to slow down a country, you take out the scientific and economic Virat Kohli's. You were a scientific Virat Kohli. I'm sorry, I'm trivializing. No, it is, it is, it is exactly the comparison is very much correct. So was the American government possibly responsible? Did they, have you ever thought that maybe they put pressure on the Indian government to trouble you? No, not the Indian government. They put the pressure on the Russian government to, to close the contract of the cryogenic contract. And the Russian government obeyed simply because uh, there were no USSR. Uh, it was... I'm, I'm actually talking in relation with your case, sir. Yeah, in my case only. At that time, the Americans applied pressure on the Russians just to close the contract of the cryogenic with India. And instead of technology, that is, they should not give the technology because they said that they can be used for uh, ICBMs and IRBMs, which is untrue, and uh, etc. Then the Russians uh, were willing to obey the request of the uh, American counterpart. So that is the reason which has led to this. Have you ever looked at yourself as a scapegoat of geopolitics? This is nothing but that. What wow. you're saying is nothing but that. It is. This is how it goes. The only question here, which is unanswered, is that, yes, they are interested. And who are the real black sheep here? Who is the person who did that? For that, they have identified so many people. Conspiracy is the reason. Now they are trying to find out who is the real person for that. Okay. Do you want to shift gears a little bit? Yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's the beauty of life? What's the beauty of life? I mean, I don't understand the question, but I will tell you whatever <laughs> I have understood. Something what you have done 
will will uh, see that the, the the pleasure and then sadness are not permanent it keeps coming that's the beauty of life <laughs> okay you, you will be happy at sometimes you will be sad at times and things like that, that sadness is, will keep coming yeah yeah it will change it will you, you, there is a saying even this also will pass through this too shall pass uh, this too shall pass through that's the beauty in fact that is a beauty and that is what i was hoping at that time now i don't want this to happen again because i am very happy <laughs> uh at the beginning of the movie there is a scene where i think when that tv show starting with shahrukh khan where he brings up the case and then madhavan responds like technically you respond by saying you know i've done so much in my life but you want to bring up the case again okay let's talk about it <laughs> i actually want to talk now about all the other stuff that you've done uh the indian internet recently has started celebrating indian scientists as well which is why let's talk about science a little bit yeah you've seen the whole journey of isro everyone's proud of isro today uh there's if people have not seen rocketry the movie i don't think they know what kind of a role your career has played in what isro is today and from your eyes from where you saw isro with vikram sarabhai to where it is today how do you feel well it's a long journey in fact in isro there is a general culture i think the culture the credit goes to dr sarabhai he he brought in a culture by which you can call the chairman isro and then say mr chairman you are wrong and nobody will find fault with you and they will listen to you this is not existing anywhere else <coughs> in any department in the country like there's a feedback mechanism inbuilt in the culture yeah it's freedom you you feel like talking what you feel like you know you can tell that that is one thing and that is one area for example i'll give you one example mm. you see we were discussing about uh, putting up a test facility for testing uh, a single engine viking engine vikas engine it's a 60 ton thrust so we designed it and all and then we were trying to build that test facility all of a sudden it occurred to me that uh, if the same facility can be converted into not single engine but four engine meaning 240 tons thrust uh, which would mean i can go one step further and then later if i have an opportunity to club these four engines it will be useful so i told this to my chairman my chairman professor sajesh davan is such a great person He was asking me, "We have not even tested one engine. Oh, you think it's worth it?" I said, "Sir, it is only one crore is the additional cost because of that. Because instead of four meter by four meter base, I have to make five meter by five meter base." So one crore is one crore. I don't know. I don't think that you should do. Then it went on, and then further he said, "Before running, you should know how to." stand and then how to walk without that i don't want you to run but i couldn't sleep um, i knew that i am not able to convince the chairman so what i did was i went and by a shortcut i went to one mr r d john he was the construction engineer i told him mr john can you make this 5 meter by 5 meter then he immediately asked was there a change of design yeah some small change and then it will cost you additional money i said i'll reappropriate uh, some money and then give you because one crore reappropriation was not difficult but is don't you think it needs chairman's approval i said yeah you i will get the approval etc but uh, he accepted it so he said all right he will do 5 meter by 5 meter i was happy but my worry was when is the chairman going to find out this and that fateful day came after about a month and that day the flight this is where i am telling about the messages um on that day the flight to trivandrum to bangalore was cancelled so chairman who got stuck here in trivandrum wanted to spend the rest of the time unscheduled he said why not we go to mahendragiri mahendragiri is the place where we have this test facility i just want to have a look at it so he went there something told told me that something is going to go bad 
So I have to accompany him. I accompanied. And he was looking around and down and he came nearer to the test facility. And then from a distance itself, he said, Hey, Nambi, come, 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 come. It looks like it's not four meter by four meter. It looks five meter by, or something more. I just kept quiet. Then he asked me, tell me, is there any... Then R.D. John, who was there, he said, yes, sir, Nambi told me to make it five meter by five <laughs> meter. So I said, anyway... It has gone beyond my head. I said, yes, sir, we have done it. And he was very unhappy. And he asked me, unusually, it is unusual on his side, asked me, are you chairman Isro or am I chairman Isro? I said, undoubtedly, you are the chairman Isro. I don't know, but this is not fair. Then I, I said, sorry, sir. I immediately came to John, go back to four meter by four meter and then try to build it on that four meter by four meter, not five meter by any meter, nothing like that, etc. Matt is over. Years pass by. Chairman Tavan uh, retires and then afterwards Professor Rao comes in the picture. We were discussing about the future of uh, ISRO missions, including the GSLV at that time. One vehicle configuration, which was favored by all, is a four engine configuration at the bottom. Then everybody was asking, but we have no test facility for the four engine. Then somebody else telling that why we didn't foresee this earlier. Then another fellow saying, Nambi, tell me why you didn't foresee this earlier. This went on. I am keeping quiet, naturally. It went so, then finally, Professor U.R. Rao, who was the chairman, is Rao. Of course, Professor Daman himself was sitting in the review as an ex officio. He's asking, I don't know, Nabi, I thought you would have foreseen this. You were always talking about Vikas and... I, again, I kept quiet. Yes, it is unfair on my side to say that it was... I tried my best, it didn't work. And Professor Dhawan raised his hand and then said, I'm sorry, you are barking at the wrong tree. I am the person who should be blamed for... Damn. You see, this kind of culture... Where will you get it? Culture of leaders. Yeah, he, he is accepting the blame. And so were you to not put blame on the captain. Yes. Anyway, that is a good thank you. But I am saying, this is what ISRO culture is. I, I am saying this, I, I used to quote this, I have never quoted this to any, anybody so far. It's the first time we are, we are getting it quoted here. And... Uh, I went there at the end of the meeting. I just shook his, I mean, took his hands and then I said, I'm, no, you did your best. I I think I didn't, I didn't uh, foresee this. Really. Anyway, good job done, etc. Now, anyway, we couldn't do the four-engine configuration because if the four-engine configuration were to be tried, a test facility is required. That test facility would cost another 300 crores, etc., etc., would have been. So we are, we are very trying solids and liquids and things. So what I'm trying to impress you, ISRO had a culture. That culture, nothing, nothing can match that culture. This is uh, true with every chairman, magnanimous people. Not See, look, Professor Davan is from California Institute of Technology. Professor Vyar Rao is from MIT. And Dr. Sarabhai himself is from MIT. Of course, I also should say that I am from Princeton. We were all from the Ivy League universities. So in, in a way, if you really look at it, these people, they have learned something. They are originally something. They have developed something. They have performed something. Yeah. This is where you have the... And at your core, all of you all are Jugadu and Desi, which comes through in rocketry. Yes, yes, yes. Like there's so much Jugad at play. Am I right? Yeah, it is there. It is there in the blood of all these people. You must understand. Otherwise, they all would have gone abroad already. Who who would refuse a job for any of these people? For NASA, you're saying? NASA, anywhere they will be taken because they are the gem of the... See, the, the kind of people, they are, they are, I don't say how to... Their IQ levels are so high. Like you're basically saying, again, I'm referencing cricket here. Do you mind that I'm referencing cricket? Uh, 
it, know, it's okay that I'm referencing. Yeah, yeah. It's to explain the point. Yeah. It's like Virat Kohli is playing for your country. Rohit Sharma is playing for your country. And America says, hey, by the way, you guys would be great in NASA. Play for us. <laughs> and Kohli and Rohit Sharma are saying, no, no. We're Indian first and foremost. Yeah. We'll play for our country. Even yeah. if it's for much lesser money, much lesser opportunity, yeah, much yeah. lesser possibility. That's what came through in rocketry as well. So at your core, you're like Indian soldiers in some ways. But anyway, if somebody is going to ask Virat Kohli to pray for their country, it won't be US. It can be South Africa. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some, some yeah. other country. I'm mixing up two words. <laughs> See, two I'm words. just saying, what little knowledge I have about cricket is very limited. Yeah. I, I'm not a cricketer. No, Kohli comes up a lot on our show because uh, I'm a big fanboy, honestly. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but uh, speaking about fanboys, there's lots of fanboys and fangirls who are now very, very interested in ISRO. Um, the narrative about ISRO in our eye, in my generation's eye, is that for very less money, there's a huge scale of impact that's constantly created. That's ISRO's international reputation now. That with a very tiny budget, lots has been accomplished. Yeah, Again, sure, 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 sure. I mean, of course you can't encapsulate why that's happened in just a few words or just a few reasons. There's teamwork, there's leadership, there's culture, there's jugaad. As rocketry showed us, there is patriotism. But what else, sir? No, it's only in one word I can tell you. Intelligence. You see, you are taking... You, you, is your capital is only intelligence. I can okay. clearly tell you. You see, for example, I don't know how to, how to put it. These people... Uh, everybody is systematic. You are systematic. I am NASA is systematic. We are also systematic. But the question is, we are conscious of the fact that we don't have that kind of money to throw around. We are conscious of the fact. We don't want to throw away the money unnecessarily. And it is not luck which is on our side. It is the skill and intelligence alone on our side. One, one simple example I can tell you. For example, there is a law, unwritten law, which states Every element which is flown should have been tested on the ground. This is a law. You can't fly a material without testing it on the ground. Now the Vikas engine, for example, it is a second stage. It has a nozzle. It's a bell-shaped nozzle. That nozzle is operating after the altitude. So it is an altitude nozzle. So you have to test it under high altitude conditions, which means you should have a high altitude test facility, which would cost you close to 100 crores, and then you should uh, test it. Now, we didn't have a facility, so 100 crores is required. Second thing is it will take about two to three years time to establish it. So what is our alternative method? We followed the fabrication of the nozzle in every step by the same method like what NASA or ESA is doing. Then naturally one question comes, if that is the case, why do you test it? You can fly it. But there is an unwritten law which says you can't fly something which is not tested on the ground. You know, we found out a method that is instead of creating a high altitude test facility, we flew the rocket only by first two stages alone. You fly it, and the second stage is ignited at that altitude. Is it not as good as testing it on a high altitude facility? Who decided those rules originally? This is international standard? International standard as well as national standard okay. as well as... Everywhere it is like that only. In okay. fact, even today, nobody has broken that. So, this is me found out. Actually, I am the architect of it. So what happened is I, I tried to convince and um, I asked them, tell me, is it not a test? Hmm. It is a test. Is it not simulating high altitude? Yes, it is simulating. The rule is that no, nothing can be flown unless it is tested on the ground. I am testing on the air. That's all. I'm, but still I am testing it. Anyway, to make a long story short, it was accepted. It was flown. And then subsequently we are flying it even today 58 times. The point I am making is, in that argument, we saved 100 crores. Yeah. Now, then why you can't become cheaper? Because, because of this approach. As Arnold Schwarzenegger says, you don't break the law 
but you have to break some of the rules no it is not a legal uh, lawyers kind of a syndrome no it's just the court <laughs> yeah. as in the my point is you have to break rules sometimes i used to be very frank with you have i broken the rules uh, this is what the international <laughs> no, you know good no, good I, student I, I rules i have not broken the rules i have convinced professor sas uh, dr davan himself it is not yet yes sir no okay so this is uh, in in other words my first point comes intelligence comes in the picture yeah so you have a, this is because you are conscious of the fact that you don't have that kind of a money to throw yeah. the most important thing i'll tell you once that test is over the higher altitude facility has no role to play mm waste of space waste, waste of, of money space, yes okay so this, this is what uh, i feel is uh, important yeah is through the bad boys of science <laughs> <laughs> right breaking some of the conventional norms yeah. working with low budgets i think there is street smarts at play here also honestly which the nation calls jugaad like getting work done in minimum resources yeah which is say our not only the labor caste is uh, small our approach itself is uh, intelligent approach yeah okay um do you want the indian government to fund isro much more that's a very obvious answer i no, think no oh again it's a as so a question is something which you have to put it properly what is your aim if your aim is if you define your aim then i will say whether you want to fund it more or less um be the most accomplished space agency in the world more than nasa yes if that is nets you have to fund it more how much more sir ah uh, it's a question of debate it's a question if it is uh, something i can tell you which i have already worked out uh, in some sense for example if you are talking about a space station uh, wherein you want to use it for tourism then it could be something like about 10000 15000 crores maximum but if you are talking about uh, interplanetary travel and uh, you know those kind of a thing then it is uh, to be worked out it is not difficult to work it out Oh it is possible to work it's it. just a matter of budgets you know it's a matter of requirement see you don't unnecessarily work on something supposing if you define that you want to see the missions which already we are working on like uh, chandra and, and mars you see the mars missions and chandra and missions are only our um, uh, what do you call uh, uh, makeshift arrangements that is we didn't have something to fly in the sense we never had a mission chandra in 1 and 2 or nothing we we, we we had only the so called uh, jslv vehicle with that you can fly only a 15 kg or 20 kg but then we thought with that we will go we will go and uh, see why the payload of the chandrayaan is only 20 kg or 25 kg whatever it is if you want to fly a man you can't do it a man will weigh more than 25 kg because you don't have a carrier you don't have a bigger thruster so the bigger thruster is what is necessarily to be developed wow okay i got to pause you here just a little bit so your point is that when you're talking about these space missions there has to be an end goal with it true yeah, 100% correct the technique to get there already exists in theory knowledge Knowledge. and capability yes yes isro has the knowledge as well as capability sure, to do some sure. crazy things in sure. space tech yes yes uh i want to highlight two things one uh the world is obsessed with space tech now we're seeing people like elon musk and jeff bezos plus i'm sure nasa china all these people have plans when it comes to space tech people say the future of warfare is in space etc uh parallelly we've had abhijit chawda repeatedly on the show uh he talks about how there are resources on the moon there are definitely resources on mars there are resources on uh, meteors that are floating out there in space uh and if you actually tap into those resources uh i hate putting it that way but there's money to be made you know but yeah it is going to be possible i'll tell you this i have been telling uh, time and again you have uh, a nasa for the americans yeah you have a esa for the europeans but i am proposing an esa asian space agency for the indians asian space agency asian space agency asia minus china china can also fall in line with you how do you say china will not join you forget about it china let us not show sure. pakistan also may not join but <laughs> but the other countries like um, um, malaysia singapore vietnam malay and then you have japan japan 
Japan will readily join, and then all the Gulf countries, all these countries will join. So afterwards, see, after all, all these interplanetary travel are not only for your country, even for mankind. Mankind. So ESA, NASA, and ESA join together can easily tackle the money part of it. Mm, okay. See, the money you you why do you want to spend it alone? And also, you are in, dependent on other countries for various reasons. For example, tracking. You you know it has come out that we have put a tracking station somewhere in Africa. Nobody knew, I thought, but some somebody has dug out and then they are putting this in the public news. So so many things we are doing, but in, it's, it is for the mankind. So I feel it is prudent to have an Asian Space Agency. This, if the government takes an initiative. I will tell you, you will immediately jump to the conclusion China will not join. Who knows? Sometimes China may join. If China joins, you are all the border disputes will also vanish in the and their passes. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just. I mean, China you. has a reputation of uh, giving low blows. <laughs> I don't know, but I am saying this. This will uh, help a lot. In okay. The, okay. I, I I get your point, sir. Uh, you mentioned the number ten thousand to fifteen thousand crores maximum. For the Gaganyaan kind of a project, that is for the space tourism, that is a space station. I am talking about something okay. equivalent to Mir. Okay. But point is, you should go beyond that if you are really meaning something. I think someone needs to do capitalism-based research on what space missions to undertake in terms of if we go to the moon and if we start digging there, what will we truly find? Or meteors? Or Mars? See, I'm talking from a very amateur <laughs> podcasting perspective here. <laughs> If you, since you have asked me a question, how to get money, <laughs> I I want to give you an example here. Um, one of my colleague who uh, who was one among the fifty two people, sure. he went there to France, became sick, so he complained. He's not able to swallow food. He was having pain. On diagnosis, it was found out that there is a growth. On the foot passage, outside the foot passage, fouling with the heart. It required surgery. The surgery is to be done in uh, Hospital Beaujon, that is in Paris, and the same hospital where Christian Bernard uh, was doing the heart transplantation. And they expected the price to be about eight lakhs of French francs. We never had any medical insurance, <laughs> so. I wrote to the government here saying that we need that kind of a money. Then somebody from the department wrote back saying that uh, pack him to India, we will treat him there. The statistics here in the same hospital is four such surgeries were <laughs> taken place. Out of that, two is dead and two is uh, successful. That being the fifty percent success rate, my mind did not permit me to send him to India at that time. So I did not know what to do. Uh, pack him to India is uh, something which I don't want to do. Asking the money is not going to come. So I found out a method. I I just wanted to share it with you. Um, I made the International Red Cross. I uh, talking to them. Madhusil Maris. Then he, she said she will fund that uh, project. And then on her funding. With that letter, I wrote a letter this time to not only to Chairman Isro but External Affairs Minister, Prime Minister, everybody, stating that one of our finest engineers, he is from IIC Bangalore, went through a mill and he has this problem. And now I am with a begging bowl going around to treat that Indian engineer. I am really ashamed to be the leader of this group. I really, some emotional <laughs> letter. You won't believe. Within twenty-four hours, we got the money. Mm. So, you you watch the what works there. See the, the money came anyway, and he was done the surgery, and then um, he, he, it was a successful surgery. He came back to India, etc., etc. So, in in your own uh, thing, you you should address so many so many things there. We are living with uh, so many <laughs> specimens. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did we get here? <laughs> uh, we were talking about the moon, Mars. Talking about making money in space. Yeah, you even a space tourism. If you make, 
you will get a lot of money. Lots. Lots of money. You, your 10,000 crores will be available in, I don't know about it. See, there are so many people who are in the queue to go for space tourism. All you have to prove is that you are reliable. Mm. You are assuring them that they can go and come back alive, which yeah. we are. Yeah. So, that it's easy to do. See, nothing is easy, but it is possible to do. Got it. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah. It's like, you know, when a genie gives you three wishes and some people say, my first wish is that I want a thousand more wishes. So if you've been given a budget, first you create the entity that will create an infinite budget for you. Sure, sure. So that's your logic. Yeah, yeah sure. You should make money out of it. I gave two logics. One is you don't try to spend alone. Mm. You you make a, a common Asia. radiation space agency. Then you come to this. You, from this, you can make money out of it. Okay. And then fund for the space travel. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. And if you join together, there's nothing like that. I'm sure that all the countries will agree uh, yeah. for this. Um, so... Uh, you said 10,000 to 15,000 crores for that space station. Yes. Damn. Uh, <laughs> have you ever met Mukesh Ambani? <laughs> <laughs> you see, there are so many startups here. Yeah. Um, I, I was told that about 150 tra startups are there. I don't know whether Mukesh Ambani has uh, something to... I'm sure they do. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, to the best of my knowledge, nobody is talking about a Gaganyan project. Or, but I think they should, they, instead of saying that I will produce PSLVs, they should come with a bang saying that I will do this. What is the big deal about it? Okay. There's nothing nothing big about it. It's okay. possible to do. Fair. Namin Narayanan sir has given his roadmap for the next <laughs> stage for uh, space travel <laughs> and space discovery. Yes, yes, yes. It is possible. Why did you become a scientist in life? Honestly speaking, I was like any other child. I was uh, impressed by whatever is flying above us. So I looked around and then I found flying an aircraft is interesting, nice. And as an engineering student, uh, the, what is close to that is a compressor. That's the only thing I can do as a compressor for my project work. It's an aerofile shape. I did that. Afterwards, I didn't get anywhere nearer. I went to a sugar factory, started my career as a sugar engineer, only to fight with the chief engineer and then get out of that job. That was how I started becoming a scientist. In the sense, it was purely by an accident that I happened to understand there was a vacancy in Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station, which is known as TELS. So the last day it was over. The day when I saw the paper, 18th of uh, November, I think. 18th of November, the date is over. Hmm. I still wanted to make an attempt. I go there. I went there and then asked uh, the administration. They said, it's all over, you can't. There again, like the Volvo Nasil. <laughs> I said, if somebody is applying from Madras, they will apply only today. That's the last, yesterday. That's that. You would receive it only tomorrow. Mm. But I am giving the application today itself. Uh -huh. Why don't you accept it? Uh -huh. Finally, the director of the center, he is a very kind-hearted person. He accepted it. So there you are. I am here in this job. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have to ask you one of the questions related to the theme of my show. Are you ready for the question? Yeah, it depends on the question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in aliens? I believe, yes. You believe in alien yes, life? Yes, 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 yes. Since childhood or over the course of your career, things have happened? Over the have... course of my career, really? I believe it. Yes. Let's talk. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Sir. <laughs> uh, what made you believe in aliens very, over very, the course of your career? The answer is very simple. You are in earth and you are here and existing. Yeah. How you came into existence? If you answer that question, it will answer the question which you asked. Like what you came into existence, there could be so many other areas where some other creatures may be existing. So the mathematical possibility is why you believe in aliens. It's a practically, it is It is there, you, you are understanding. Now the question is you are not able to communicate with them, you are not able to talk to them, you are not able to do. But you will, eventually you will, you will do it. I'm sure about it. There's no basic uh, doubt in my mind about it. Uh, it may not be having the same shape and uh, something. Yeah. 
it is there it is there in the sense i have no doubt about it i am very authoritatively telling you that it is there which is why i feel like now isro's budgets should be directed towards a machine that sends out an om 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 <laughs> sorry it's, it's a horrible joke sorry guys <laughs> no 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 you are sure you you should say om 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 and then <laughs> we have a nice jadu type alien come up to us not necessarily in that uh, worm bomb but uh, i think there are rumors which you must be aware of there are some communications back which we are not able to decipher oh and there are some planets which are so many light years away which resemble that of the earth okay Let, let's break down this communications thing who has caught those communications no i i'm saying about stray news is in the space news if you read regularly right. you 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 get into some yes back it has come okay but somebody some wing of the nasa is already working on that they are trying to send the signals different kinds of signals different frequencies different possibilities what do they send out yeah i don't know but what they send out could be how are you where are you you are who are you like that could be okay. in different languages now they are getting they didn't get any reply so far in some sometimes they get some signals back not necessarily a reply to this maybe they are also seeking something yeah. like that so those signals were uniform uh, regular so they are trying to decipher it but they were not able to decipher it they were uniform and regular yeah it means that they came from some life form exactly some kind of a sensible form something I, that had a brain yes 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 okay maybe superior brain than you was yeah perhaps but why were we not able to decipher it why i don't know because i i you see it could be it is not very easy to decipher uh, many things first of all i don't know the coding how it comes and uh, sure what it is it is uh, but sure. it is there you can be rest assured of it sure. it is there i am an electronics and telecom engineer so i understood what you meant by coding but i'm trying to explain it to the average listener uh basically you know we take phone calls for granted like we call our friends just by typing the name on our phone and dialing that number but there's a very deep format of engineering that goes into sending your voice from your mouth into the phone to the mobile tower to your friend's phone into your friend's ear uh this coding that takes place that whole sound wave of your voice is encoded uh it's separated into bits etc it's a very complex form of engineering therefore sir is saying and please correct me if i'm wrong and add to what i'm saying so uh sir is saying that we found coded sound waves or some kind of waves from some remote uh intelligent civilization which space agencies here received have i done a good job no, i'm feeling embarrassed I, no no you have done an excellent job as you say common sense we can understand but for your information i am not an electronics engineer i am a propulsion engineer i studied uh, rocket propulsion no i am a electronics yeah that's oh, i right okay. i i'm telling you you said oh, okay. that so okay. i'm saying uh, understanding myself i must be a, an engineering graduate in your level so that i can understand but you didn't go into depth so i am able to understand if you go into depth i am out i don't <laughs> think i'll be able to go into depth <laughs> cuz uh, have you seen the other armadon movie three idiots <laughs> that's how my engineering life was <laughs> this is how much engineering i remember yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay but let's talk about alien life again uh, did you see that whole mexican government or colombian government i can't remember some central american or south american government which actually revealed that aliens body in the parliament apparently later there were videos of how someone made a cake that looks like the alien and then people started assuming that oh it was actually just a false reveal but we've not heard too much more after that one news broke out no that is journalism <laughs> you remember i was telling you sensationalizing the some journalists must be there who might have migrated from yeah. india to they must have done to so. mexico honestly <laughs> i think i'll tell you it is not that easy to you are right actually the mexican fellows they were trying to do some space related work they were very primitive in their okay. area they were asking for some collaboration with us but we were not uh, till recently Uh, privatization we never agreed for any collaboration with anyone uh, now i hope in the uh, they may try to do some collaboration not necessarily with mexico but generally i am telling you yeah um do the isro scientists 
and engineers amongst themselves talk about alien life or have these conversations not not they're not in their everyday affair i'll tell you you see many people mistake uh, for example aerophysics or astrophysics all those things are not in our ra- daily routine discussions okay so even if you take the chandrayaan uh, there is a primary goal is how to propel it to that height got it and then how to make it to come out and things like that then what it measures how it measures is that of a physicist job understood and the i won't be able to understand honestly okay. what Fair. is what okay. but this is a collective thing so you are question we were not but everybody agree according to me at least from my little discussion everybody knows that there is some kind of an alien Uh, civilization or whatever you call it is existing this is all the science oriented minds at isro yeah yeah sure 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 damn because of the mathematical possibility not not only that in as i told you i believe in our intelligence common sense intelligence everybody knew that it is there what is a the big deal about it because after all if it is a big bang theory and if that is how it, the universe is formed then you have solar systems and then you have all kinds of things milky way uh, you see these are all things which is known everybody only thing is not able to explain because we don't want to go deep into it uh, at least i don't want to go deep into it because i don't know many many things on that yep. but all i know is peripherally i know that it is there yeah um you know my question is why do ufo sightings only happen in america <laughs> I don't know honestly I it implies that you are saying that they are bluffing No no no, uh, no. it implies that <laughs> they possibly have in India also I don't know but I, I, but he, he, I don't know honestly I don't know the answer I, but is it so that only in America it uh... in media only the american sightings are spoken about because most media is american like related to these things indian media doesn't talk enough about aliens Other. I I honestly don't know. I don't think there is any specific reason why it should appear in America. Because from an alien point of view, It's America just, is different. It's a small shrunk ball. Yeah. You, you are <laughs> Yeah. Um you know, say if there were UFO interactions that happened in India, um the government's first protocol would probably be to call someone at ISRO and say what do we do now? I uh, think that I am not there in this room so I would have to answer that okay. but I I myself don't know but okay. there is a space physics division is there in in Israel which is uh, active and then you have the physical research laboratory in uh, Ahmedabad where they are doing the uh, scientific experiments in fact that is how myself and Kalam we originated uh, the payload integration they bring the payload we integrate it with the with the nike and then nike apache and then sender rockets which are not our own rockets but uh, so those scientists i remember those uh, those people like dr satya prakash uh, dr opian kalla uh, dr kali uh, oyas rajan and uh, so on and so forth but you know the many of them of course later migrated in some sense into isro headquarters originally we were part of incasper then incasper became uh, tafr and then we became uh, indian space research organization etc but our chairman professor davan had an excellent team that team consists of some of the names i remember sudarshan uh, siddharth jp singh bharat uh, you know these are great 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 people these are the people in fact professor davan is the one who drew the blueprint for the future isro including gslv including pslv etc which year was uh, this? as early as 1979 1978 and then it is professor u r rao who gave shape to those blueprint so in in that sense if you really look at it the credit goes to this uh, staff officers they call and that blueprint has been accurate in terms of very 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 nice very very see the whole problem is our projects are very vague very speculative because if you do this you do this if it is mm-hmm. successful you see it is not like any other part you can't guarantee, guarantee success but so many things are there so that one i should accept it 
he's a he's a great scientist uh, he gave did he give a basic timeline that in the 2020s you guys should focus on this in the 20 yes this he blue, did his blueprint includes the dates and the dates we were able to meet not all but uh, this cryogenic we couldn't meet the date actually that you know there there was a slippage of more than 12 14 years but uh, the high thrust engines we have to meet but davan retired 1985 that is uh, so many 38 years back what's predicted for this and the next decade no he predicted or he drew the blueprint for pslv see 79 slv3 went kalam's project afterwards you have the pslv you have the no i you have the aslv you have the pslv then you have the gslv all the three were going smoothly but gslv had different variants gslv1 gslv2 gslv3 now that includes a cryogenic system that cryogenic system is what we were hoping to have it because of uh, the russian contract but that was blown up out that got delayed instead of 2001 it came in 2014 so but otherwise it's an excellent uh, planning okay. i can call it as planning i got a move you to a burning question that uh, my whole team has had i'm sure listeners of the uh, episode have i had after watching rocketry uh, what was dr kalam like as a teammate and a guy beyond his professional achievements also an attached question is why did he become dr apj abdul kalam no, but kalam was not alive when he saw the rocketry No, no. I'm saying you worked with him. Yeah, yeah. You were his teammate. Yes, yes. When you work with someone, you get to know a lot more about them than the world knows. That's my question to you. How was he? Uh, I can. I think you should make this question a little more clear. If you've we've met today, yeah, we've spoken. Yeah, you've yeah. You've gotten to know me a little bit. Yeah, much about it. Yeah. Okay. My me. My yeah. art. You got to work. for such a long duration with him yes my question is what did you get to learn about him yeah actually i can give you a typical example that he ha- he first of all he is a very uh, very good person nice person very good person absolute inch by inch he is a gentleman this is number 1 number 2 he had a foresight which is unbelievable i can tell you one example which which will explain to you uh, more about kalam I'm I'm thankful to you that you asked this question. You see, in the year 1967, I remember that that is about approximately 33 plus 60, 56 years back. Okay, Kalam and myself, we were together in the what do you call the payload integration group. We we never had a defined job other than the payload to be integrated with the rockets. the payload will come once in a blue moon and then other times we had no job honestly so we wanted to do some job and then we found out uh, various jobs which includes the d2 rocket which is a 3 inch diameter rocket now today we have a 3 meter diameter rocket okay then liquids absolutely no question about it nobody knows what is liquids so he immediately gave with an idea that who knows tomorrow we will be making very big rockets now these rockets are to be recovered he didn't say payload he said the rocket rockets may have to be recovered for reuse so why not we do some experiment on that none of us he said we don't have a rocket for for us to recover even a 3 inch rocket it goes and it dances it's nothing big about it but then he designed with of course myself and uh, we uh, mr sudhakar mr c r satya and mr m k abdul majid these are the four five persons we were together we designed a system the system is uh, a canister which will resemble a rocket body is 1 foot diameter and about 2 uh, feet long in that canister we had a parachute and a float and a cable which is uh, tying around the parachute and a cable cutter in that and there is a lid and then the lid has to be opened with that so there is a pressure cartridge all those things were packed now this packing we don't have a rocket to take it to that height 
idea was to drop it from a height, receive it at the Arabian Ocean, like what we did in the Gaganyaan. So we took it by an aircraft. That aircraft is nothing other than Pushpak aircraft, which is a two-seater. This belongs to a flying club. In that, Sudhakar was the second uh, fellow, and the first fellow is Dr. Krishnan. He was a pilot. I remember very well all those things. Then he took off. At that altitude, he dropped the canister from there. There is a timer integrated into the canister. The moment you release the timer, the timer will start working. So at uh, five seconds or so, the timer initiated the lid. The lid was blasted off. Then the entire uh, parachute tied up, all came out. Then after 10 second, the cable cutter was initiated. The cable which was tying around the parachute was cut off. Then the parachute got deployed and the entire parachute was coming slowly, landing on the Arabian Ocean, Arabian Sea, of course. <laughs> and then there was a float which comes around and then... Then, of course, there was not a Navy ship awaiting this. There was a boat, a fisherman's boat, <laughs> went and picked up this. This all experiment took place in the year 1967. Now, you tell me what was his foresight. What he did at that time became a reality after 53 years. So, I am saying that will explain to you who is Kalam to you. Mm. Okay. Very futuristic. Very, very futuristic. Very, very futuristic. And he's a great, great person. What was he like to just chill with? <laughs> He doesn't drink beer anyway. To chill with means, you know, one another joke is that he called me one day and then said, Nambi, tomorrow onwards we are going to become wet. You know, wet means that uh, the beer shops and then uh, liquor shops are all going to be opened. I also thought, okay, this man is going to drink or something. Then I thought, yes, Kalam, tomorrow the Kerala state becomes wet. That means prohibition is lifted. The next day and two days afterwards, I asked Kalam, don't you think that you have to... <laughs> he said, who will go? I never go nearer to that. So, he... But one thing is that he will crack a joke and he will never... Not even smile. He will keep walking. <laughs> now you have to understand and then you have to smile. So, he's, he's a good fellow to work with. Nice chap. And he's the first person when I conducted the test in France... 1985, December 12th, I remember the date, he congratulated me. Yeah, because he was not very hopeful of the liquid system at that time. So he called me and then said, congratulations, you have done it. That scene is there in the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same thing. So that explained to you who is Kalam. Okay. What was going on in his mind most of the time according to you? You know, after he became president, his problems were uh, generally not away from space related matters. Once he was out of space, he went to DRDO. Then he became the, what do you call, advisor to the defense ministry and then to the prime minister, then became the president. And he was all the, all, all the time occupied on issues which are unrelatable to space related matters. Once he was talking about uh, I was there in, 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 in his company. He was telling that these borders of Sri Lanka fisherman boat and our fisherman boat, why not we find a mechanism by which you cross the border, then you must have a signal telling you that you are crossing the border, some kind of a thing. Like that he, he used to... See, global methods... See, what I'm sure bothered him is that the fight between these two fishermen all the time, and then he is worried about... <laughs> my fish! No, my fish! <laughs> yeah. It's basically what it is. Yeah. It's always problem solving. Actually, the speaking, the, the most interesting thing is the fishermen alone fight with each other. Mm. Because unfortunately, unfortunately, that area, you get a lot of fish. It yeah. appears. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what I am sensing from what you're saying about him is that he was always a thinker and a student of science, like for a very long time, even in his political career. Yeah, yeah. Are you he was never a political person. Mm. According to me, he was never a political person. Was he happy in politics? I don't think so. Ooh. I don't think that he was a 
in fact he he is not comfortable with the, he have you quoted any political decision made by him i don't think so i don't think any is there any political decision made by him as president or not that, not that i remember plus i was too young when he was <laughs> the president Actually, i i don't know at this i think that he is unfit to be a, a political person okay. yeah. why did he take on that political role then he thought that things which he couldn't do as a space engineer he could do there as uh, in fact he was telling me in an indirect language uh, finds it a little uncomfortable because he is not free to move around he is not free to go around things like that he see he was jokingly telling who will uh, take on me there so much of security around me i feel uncomfortable <laughs> like mm. that he was telling so he was in politics to basically enable things for the world of indian science Uh, honestly i don't know whether you are right in using the word politics with respect to him because as a president is it necessary that he should be a politician i think you're in that general domain of being around yeah, politicians yeah, yeah 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 i don't know i am just asking this question yeah again i don't know myself as well but that's what i assume sir. that's how delhi works generally yeah. you know everyone's in that same lutians area yeah, you're possibly. meeting like the other politicians that energy is rubbing off yeah but i think he was not a politician according to me according to me he was not a politician but he is a fair uh, person he won't join the ruling party or the non ruling party or something if at all if he has decided something it will be in the interest of the nation yeah that's all he will do that's how he's remembered yeah like so many of these guys who are gen z's you know born after 2000 i don't think they were old enough to even remember him being the president but we've heard about APJ Abdul Kalam Actually, there are so many things we were we were thinking about it for example you work there in the office for more than 3 days continuously after all you know you don't have a guest house you don't have anything you have to sleep on the table you have to sleep on the beach <laughs> and then after third or fourth day you say i kalam i want to go home and then come back tomorrow or after an hour or two then he will look at you as if some sky has fallen down he will look at you like this very sad okay if you want to go you go after that answer you will never feel like going <laughs> <laughs> god passion for the work passion for the work yes, okay yes. one last question for you one last segment for you on today's episode sir mm-hmm. um as a student of science based on where science is going now what are you excited about for our future it's a slightly science fiction oriented question well i i feel that see one one thing which bothers me i i will tell you that when we studied we were um, the number of engineering colleges were very limited at least in tamil nadu where i studied uh, there are six colleges 120 seats per college so 720 seats today you have more than 3 lakhs the engineering standards have come down oh yes and uh, people are not having the job so they go for uh, a tall keep uh, person or gatekeeper that can be sickening it's, it's, i feel sad about it yeah uh, this is not on this is not on because originally when uh, we were applying to various institutes we were getting the priority we were getting admissions and all now they will have to screen which uh, college which so you have iits you have uh, iic and you have units etc i feel with uh, some difficulty with mercilessly you have to stop the licenses of many of the engineering colleges i, I would call it as 90% of the engineering colleges yeah and then try to re- uh, uplift the standards of those 10% to the level of nits and things yeah. like that you know i remember when i was getting into engineering college uh, i had a good score in my entrance exam my entrance exam was a 200 mark entrance exam okay i was at 167 which was good in that year decent not the best i had friends who had 21 out of 200 marks <laughs> and they also got an admission yeah 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 in an engineering college because those engineering colleges had empty seats so if someone got 2 out of 200 even that person would have got an admission yeah that's why the standard has gone down standard yeah. has gone and i was in a good engineering college which is considered decent we had good facilities and all that but just the syllabus we were taught was very outdated and it was not taught in the way engineering should be taught i think i've learned more engineering on the show than i learned in college in many ways <laughs> because in college you're told to uh, mug up 
rote learning is given importance to but true engineering is actually taught to you by elder brothers you know yeah, yeah. or elder sisters who just teach you how mechanics how machines work um i i don't know if there's a solution to this problem and this is a whole other conversation but it's looking like the world of privately owned education institutes will be the way forward like that's where real education seems to be happening yeah yeah you are right you are right uh again this is a solution oriented mindset this is what engineering gives you it will give you a solution oriented mindset it will give you a lot of toughness no to give an example of what uh, whatever you were saying extending it during my time we were doing one full first of all five years course it is not four years in the fifth year we were asked to work on a project which is a very important project yeah whatever you do in the fourth year four years you you study applied thermodynamics you study yeah. theory of machines fluid dynamics all kinds of things but as an engineer to put together is what is happening in the project work then if you successfully complete the project work that means you can call yourself as an engineer mm. applications are coming there but today project works are available for sale yeah 2000 rupees you get mm. a project work and then stamp it and then call yourself and the professors know this and everyone's just okay with it yeah like it's it's a very weird system uh, i actually encourage young parents to not put their kids in traditional engineering colleges unless it's an iit unless it's an nit or bits if it's that level of college you're getting actual engineering based coaching uh my friends from iit say that you know that's not completely true bro because <laughs> apparently even in iit is the same road learning thing i don't know i've not been in an iit so please correct me if i'm wrong but yeah it's looking like it is a problem for our country what i will tell you though is that even when you go through a bad engineering college experience where you're not really taught engineering you come out a changed person because you're around mathematics for so long and you're you're really taught to be slightly tough and you are taught solution oriented mindset i will, i want to tell you one thing very important sure many of the people are not liking mathematics for some reason yeah if they don't like mathematics then why the hell they come to engineering That's there is no point but then why they don't like mathematics i found out something on my own the way in which they are taught mathematics yeah for example recently my daughter started in montessori i helped her to the way in which the mathematics is taught to the young buds 2 and a half year old to 6 years old children you will never say no to mathematics that is the difference so i am saying montessori system of education which was designed by that lady dr montessori 120 years back is the right way of teaching mathematics mm-hmm. but you don't have montessori school here many more yeah yeah you that's just, the whole problem yeah a lot of education is becoming self education post college yeah that's that's the truth about my generation and i see that around me i'm 30 years old i have friends who have made it in life who are doing things in life career wise and i have friends who are not doing things and the differentiating factor is that the set which is doing things is constantly learning and is constantly learning about new things or going deeper into their own subject it's just how the modern world works so uh, again to get out of the rat race to go ahead you have to study as an adult and that's what i'm hoping to give to the world through this show it's a free of cost show so <laughs> thank well, you one more one more thing before we conclude i want sure. to tell you uh, doctors engineers and then uh, lawyers these three communities are necessarily to upgrade their knowledge by continuously reading true but this is not taking place today yeah not throughout yeah, yeah. like i mean you have exception not all but not some all. some are some are doing it yeah yeah uh all you can do is you can take a horse to the lake you can't make the horse drink the water yes 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 nambi narayan and sir this was so much fun i didn't feel like i'm talking to <laughs> someone who is decades older than me i felt <laughs> like two engineers are speaking in this whole conversation and that says a lot about your humility and greatness sir yeah yeah, yeah. uh i'm not going to make this emotional and say sorry like sharukh khan told you i am just <laughs> going to say thank you for being on the show uh this side of you needs to be exposed on the internet you know you yeah, have a whole yeah, engineering yeah. and science side people need to know that yeah yeah sure 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 i hope the experience is okay yeah, for you sir oh sure it, I, I enjoyed it nice nice way of presenting it okay thanks a lot no thank you sir uh what i will say is not sorry but thank you for everything you've done for india <laughs> okay uh, thank you i'm sure there's someone watching this episode who's going to take your legacy forward in some way or the other <laughs> yeah sure so, sure sure thank you sir appreciate your time thank you thank you thank you
that was the episode for today please share this episode with all your friends and family as i said earlier indians like dr narayanan need to be celebrated so much more than the celebrated in old media but it's the age of new media it's the age of podcasts send in your guest recommendations trs is only getting started this was the honor of my life speaking to this legend i hope i did justice to the conversation but i anticipate that dr narayanan will be back on trs at some point so tell me what you'd like for me to ask him the next time he's around thank you so much for supporting trs lots of love to you and jai hind